Since the dawn of human existence, religion has shaped our understanding of the world, the cosmos, and our place within it. From primitive rituals to elaborate theologies, religion has influenced our values, ethics, and behaviors. Today, we embark on a journey through time, tracing the origins and evolution of belief systems and exploring how religion has impacted culture and society from the earliest humans to the present day. Religion, in its most basic form, is as old as humanity itself. The human need to explain the unexplainable, to make sense of the forces of nature, life, and death, gave rise to what would become some of the first religious experiences. Early humans, faced with the overwhelming power of natural phenomena such as storms, fire, floods, and disease, sought to understand these mysterious events. In an environment where survival depended on the ability to adapt and respond to unpredictable natural forces, early humans turned to belief systems as a way of making sense of their world. In prehistoric times, life was filled with uncertainties. Thunderstorms, wildfires, and the death of a loved one were experiences that demanded explanation. Early humans had neither the scientific understanding nor the tools to explain these events in a rational manner. Instead, they relied on their imaginations and, perhaps, their sense of awe at the natural world. In this context, religion became a way to not only interpret these events but also provide comfort and meaning in a world that could often seem chaotic and unforgiving. This primal need for explanation and comfort led to the development of spiritual beliefs that we now term animism. Animism is the belief that all things, animals, plants, rocks, rivers, and even the sky, possess a spirit or soul. This was not a structured religion, but a worldview that considered the universe as alive, where every element of the natural world was interconnected with spiritual forces. These spirits were believed to be capable of influencing human lives, either benevolently or malevolently, and thus required veneration and respect. The early human sense of reverence for nature shows how deeply their spiritual beliefs were intertwined with their survival. For example, if a storm devastated a settlement, early humans may have believed that the spirit of the storm was angry and needed to be appeased through rituals or offerings. Similarly, the return of the sun after a period of darkness or a successful hunt after days of scarcity could be interpreted as signs of favor from nature's spirits. As humans moved from small, nomadic bands of hunter-gatherers to more organized groups, their spiritual beliefs began to evolve in complexity. Evidence from archaeological sites shows that early humans not only practiced animism but also developed rituals and ceremonies as part of their religious practices. Burial sites dating back tens of thousands of years reveal that early humans carefully buried their dead, often with objects and symbols that suggest a belief in an afterlife or the continuation of the soul. Shamanism likely emerged during this period as one of the earliest forms of organized spiritual practice. Shamans were believed to possess the ability to communicate with the spiritual world, acting as intermediaries between humans and the spirits. They played a critical role in maintaining harmony between the physical and spiritual realms, often performing rituals to heal the sick, ensure good harvests, or drive away malevolent forces. The role of the shaman was not just religious but also social. In early societies, where survival often depended on working together, shamans helped foster social cohesion through shared rituals and practices. These rituals often involved dance, music, or other communal activities that brought people together. By reinforcing a sense of collective identity and belonging, early religious practices played a key role in building early communities. Shamanism, in its various forms, is still practiced in some indigenous cultures around the world today, such as the Sami people of Northern Europe, the Native American cultures in North America, and the traditional healers of Central Asia. One of the most profound impacts of early religious practices was the way they fostered social cohesion. In small, close-knit groups, religious rituals and ceremonies provided a framework for cooperation and unity. Shared beliefs created a sense of identity and belonging, where everyone's participation in rituals was crucial for the well-being of the community. These rituals, whether centered on fertility, hunting, or seasonal changes, allowed individuals to feel that they were part of something larger than themselves. 
religious rituals also established moral codes within communities. In many early societies, the beliefs that the gods or spirits could punish wrongdoers created a form of social control. By adhering to the rules and practices of the group, early humans strengthened social bonds and cooperation, increasing their chances of survival. The act of coming together for a common religious purpose, whether it was to venerate a god, offer thanks for a bountiful harvest, or seek protection from the forces of nature, instilled a sense of solidarity. Through these shared experiences, communities became more resilient and could face the challenges of life together. As religious beliefs evolved, so too did the complexity of the deities and spirits early humans worshipped. Nature's power over life, its cycles of death and renewal, became personified in the form of gods and goddesses who represented key aspects of life. The sun, moon, animals, rivers, and weather became divine figures, with specific rituals created to honor them and ensure their favor. For instance, the sun god was often seen as the giver of life, bringing warmth and light, while the moon was often associated with the rhythms of time, fertility, and cycles of life. Animals, revered for their strength, speed, or endurance, were often considered totems or sacred beings. Early humans, by worshipping these natural elements, believed they could influence the forces that determined their survival. These gods weren't distant or abstract, they were intimately connected with daily life, guiding not only how people treated the environment but also how they interacted with each other. This early pantheon of gods and spirits demonstrates a universal human need to find patterns and meaning in the world around us. The earliest gods weren't merely worshipped, they were actively engaged with, and rituals were performed in an effort to control nature's unpredictable forces. These early forms of worship represent humanity's first steps toward formalized religion, steps that would eventually give rise to more elaborate systems of belief. As we look back on the origins of religion, it becomes clear that early human spirituality was both a reflection of humanity's awe at the natural world and a practical response to the hardships of life. The complex interplay between nature, survival, and belief laid the foundation for the development of more structured religions as human societies grew and evolved. As we continue, we'll see how these early beliefs grew into the complex religions we have today. If you are enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Your support helps us keep creating content like this. Also, check out our video on how religion has been misused throughout history on our channel. In the ancient world, belief in many gods, or polytheism, dominated human societies. From the Egyptians to the Greeks, and the Mesopotamians to the Hindus, the divine presence was felt in every aspect of life. In ancient Egypt, religion was deeply intertwined with daily life and governance. The Egyptians believed in a multitude of gods, each representing different aspects of the natural world and human experience. Central to Egyptian belief was the concept of Ma'at, which referred to the principle of cosmic order, balance, and justice. The gods were seen as guardians of Ma'at, ensuring that the natural and social order was maintained. The pharaoh, considered both a political and religious leader, was believed to be a divine being. This divine status was crucial for legitimizing the pharaoh's rule and maintaining Ma'at. As intermediaries between the gods and the people, the pharaohs performed rituals and offered sacrifices to gain divine favor and ensure the stability of the kingdom. Egyptian afterlife beliefs were another key aspect of their religion. The Egyptians viewed death not as an end but as a transition to another existence. The process of mummification was central to these beliefs, as it was thought to preserve the body for the afterlife. Elaborate burial practices and the construction of monumental tombs, like the pyramids, reflect the Egyptians' obsession with immortality and their desire to ensure a favorable afterlife. In ancient Mesopotamia, religion was also integral to societal structure. The Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians each had their own pantheon of gods, but common themes persisted across these cultures. Mesopotamian religions were characterized by their polytheistic nature, with gods associated with various aspects of life and nature. Ziggurats, massive stepped structures, were central to Mesopotamian religious practice. 
these temples served as places of worship and were believed to connect the earthly realm with the divine. Each city-state in Mesopotamia had its own patron deity, and the city's prosperity was often thought to be directly linked to the favor of its god. Religion and kingship were closely related in Mesopotamian societies. Kings were often considered representatives of the gods on earth, and their authority was seen as divinely ordained. This connection between religion and politics reinforced the power of rulers and helped maintain social order. The ancient Greeks and Romans also practiced polytheism, but their approach to religion was distinct. Greek religion featured a pantheon of anthropomorphic gods who were believed to possess human traits and emotions. Myths about these gods were central to Greek culture, explaining natural phenomena and human behavior through divine stories. Festivals played a significant role in Greek religious life. For example, the Olympic Games were held every four years in honor of Zeus, the king of the gods. These games were not only a celebration of athletic prowess but also a way to honor the divine and seek favor from the gods. The Romans adopted many Greek religious practices but also incorporated their own deities and rituals. Roman religion was closely linked to the state, with religious festivals and ceremonies reinforcing the authority of the empire. Religious institutions, such as oracles, were also important. The Oracle of Delphi, for example, was believed to provide divine guidance and prophecies, influencing major decisions in both personal and political spheres. Hinduism, one of the world's oldest religions, also began as a polytheistic belief system. Early Vedic practices involved rituals and sacrifices to gods like Indra, the god of thunder and rain, and Agni, the fire god. These practices were codified in the Vedas, ancient texts that laid the groundwork for Hindu religious and philosophical thought. The early Vedic period also saw the beginnings of the caste system, which structured society into different social classes. Religion played a role in this system, with duties and privileges assigned according to caste. This stratification was justified through religious doctrines, which were thought to reflect divine order. Hinduism provided a framework for societal organization and personal conduct. The emphasis on rituals, sacrifices, and adherence to religious duties helped maintain social cohesion and structure. Over time, Hinduism evolved, incorporating a diverse range of beliefs and practices while continuing to influence Indian culture and society. Religion in ancient societies had profound effects on social structure and culture. In many cultures, kings and emperors claimed divine right to rule, asserting that their authority was sanctioned by the gods. This claim helped to legitimize their power and enforce social hierarchies. Shared religious practices acted as a unifying force in diverse societies. Whether through communal rituals, festivals, or sacrifices, these practices fostered a sense of collective identity and belonging. The creation of monumental architecture, such as pyramids and temples, further reflected the importance of religion in public life. These structures not only served religious functions but also demonstrated the society's dedication to their gods. Festivals and rituals were central to communal life. They provided opportunities for social gathering, cultural expression, and reinforcement of societal norms. In ancient Greece, the Olympic Games were as much about religious devotion as they were about athletic competition. Similarly, in Egypt and Mesopotamia, religious festivals and ceremonies played a crucial role in maintaining the social and cultural fabric. If you are enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Your support helps us keep creating content like this. Also, check out our video on Dark Side of Religion. And here's a fun question for you, if you could be a part of any ancient civilization, which one would you choose and why? Let us know in the comments. Around the first millennium BCE, the world witnessed the rise of monotheism. These new religions taught that only one true God existed, and they forever changed the social and cultural landscape. One of the earliest and most enduring monotheistic religions is Judaism. Its foundation is traditionally linked to Abraham, a figure who is said to have made a covenant with God. 
This covenant established the central tenet of Jewish belief, that there is only one God who would guide, protect, and favor Abraham's descendants, provided they followed divine law. This covenant marked a radical shift from the polytheistic traditions of the surrounding regions, where gods were often linked to natural forces or specific cities. Judaism introduced the idea of a singular, all-powerful deity who transcended the material world and demanded moral and ethical conduct from believers. The Torah, a collection of religious texts including the laws and teachings given to Moses on Mount Sinai, became the foundation of Jewish life. These laws, which included moral commandments like the Ten Commandments, as well as detailed regulations on diet, dress, and ritual purity, shaped Jewish society, fostering a sense of identity and community. Prophets, from Isaiah to Jeremiah, played a crucial role in reinforcing the covenant by calling out injustices, urging repentance, and offering hope during times of crisis. One of the most profound events in Jewish history was the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. After the Babylonian Empire conquered the Kingdom of Judah, many Jews were deported to Babylon. This period of displacement tested the resilience of their faith. The exile forced the Jewish people to reflect on their identity, leading to the development of new religious practices like synagogue worship and the concept of a Messiah who would deliver them from oppression. Despite their return to their homeland, this experience of exile reinforced the Jewish sense of being a chosen people bound by a divine covenant, a notion that would profoundly shape their identity through the ages. Zoroastrianism, though lesser known today, played a crucial role in the development of monotheism. Emerging in ancient Persia, Zoroastrianism was founded by the prophet Zoroaster, or Zarathustra, around the 6th century BCE. Central to Zoroastrianism was the belief in a cosmic battle between good and evil, embodied by the dualistic forces of Ahura Mazda, the wise and benevolent god, and Ingramanu, the spirit of chaos and destruction. Though there was this struggle between light and darkness, Zoroastrianism affirmed that Ahura Mazda was the supreme and singular deity, a break from the traditional polytheism of Persia. Zoroastrianism introduced the idea of moral dualism, where human beings must choose between good and evil, a concept that had a lasting influence on other monotheistic religions. Zoroastrianism's emphasis on a final judgment day, where souls would be rewarded or punished based on their choices, also laid the groundwork for similar ideas in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The faith was the state religion of the Persian Empire for centuries, deeply influencing Persian culture and governance. Zoroastrian priests played a significant role in the court, interpreting the will of Ahura Mazda to guide kings in their decisions. Christianity emerged from within the Jewish tradition during the first century CE. At its core was the figure of Jesus Christ, a Jewish preacher who emphasized compassion, love, and humility. He taught that God's kingdom was not of this world but a spiritual realm accessible to those who live righteously. Jesus' message was deeply rooted in Jewish scripture, but his teachings also sought to expand the scope of salvation beyond the Jewish people to all humanity. His crucifixion, followed by the belief in his resurrection, became central to Christian faith, symbolizing victory over death and the possibility of eternal life for believers. The early Christian communities faced intense persecution under the Roman Empire, which viewed the new religion as a threat to its polytheistic traditions and the imperial cult that deified emperors. Despite this, Christianity spread rapidly throughout the empire, partly due to its message of hope and redemption for the marginalized and oppressed. The turning point came in the 4th century CE when Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity and issued the Edict of Milan, which legalized the faith across the Roman Empire. Constantine's conversion not only provided protection for Christians but also allowed the religion to flourish. By the end of the 4th century, Christianity had become the official state religion of the Roman Empire, paving the way for its profound influence on European culture and governance. The establishment of the Christian Church as an institution further cemented its role in shaping Western civilization. The Church not only preserved and transmitted religious teachings but also played a significant role in education, healthcare, and governance. Over time, Christianity's emphasis on moral absolutism, guided by divine commandments, influenced the development of Western legal systems and ethical frameworks. 
In the 7th century CE, Islam emerged as the final major monotheistic tradition in the Arabian Peninsula. According to Islamic belief, the Prophet Muhammad received divine revelations from Allah, the Arabic word for God, through the angel Gabriel. These revelations were later compiled into the Quran, Islam's holy book. Islam shares many similarities with Judaism and Christianity, acknowledging the same Abrahamic God and many of the same prophets, including Moses and Jesus. However, Muhammad is considered the final prophet, sent to provide humanity with the complete and unaltered message of God. Islam quickly spread throughout the Arabian Peninsula and beyond, driven by the strength of its message and the unifying power of its teachings. The five pillars of Islam, faith, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and pilgrimage, became the foundation of Muslim religious practice. The concept of Ummah, or the global Muslim community, fostered a sense of unity among believers, transcending ethnic and cultural boundaries. As Islamic caliphates expanded across the Middle East, North Africa, and into Europe, Islamic law, or Sharia, became a cornerstone of Islamic society. Sharia is derived from both the Quran and the Hadith, sayings and actions of Muhammad, and provides guidelines for all aspects of life, from personal conduct to governance. The early Islamic caliphates, especially the Abbasid Caliphate, became centers of learning and culture, contributing to the Islamic Golden Age. During this period, scholars made significant advances in fields such as mathematics, medicine, astronomy, and philosophy, blending knowledge from ancient Greek, Persian, and Indian sources with Islamic thought. The rise of monotheism fundamentally transformed the way societies were governed, how laws were created, and how people related to one another. One of the most significant impacts of monotheistic religions was the development of legal systems based on divine command. In both the Judeo-Christian and Islamic traditions, law and governance were seen as extensions of divine will. The Ten Commandments in Judaism and Christianity, and Sharia law in Islam, provided ethical frameworks that shaped both religious and secular laws. Monotheism also introduced a sense of moral absolutism, where right and wrong were defined by a single, omnipotent God. This belief in divine judgment and accountability had profound implications for ethics and justice in society. Actions were not only judged by human authorities but were believed to have eternal consequences, influencing behavior in both public and private life. The spread of monotheistic religions was often accompanied by conquest and missionary work. Islam spread rapidly through military campaigns and trade, while Christianity spread throughout Europe partly through the missionary efforts of the church and the conversion of kings. These expansions often led to tensions between religious groups, particularly during periods like the Crusades, where Christian and Muslim forces clashed over control of holy sites in the Middle East. In Europe, Jews faced persecution, as their refusal to convert to Christianity led to marginalization and violence. Monotheistic religions also played a significant role in shaping cultural identity. For Jews, the experience of exile and diaspora reinforced a strong sense of identity, grounded in the covenant with God and the hope for eventual redemption. Christianity's spread throughout Europe led to the Christianization of entire regions, where religious and cultural identities became closely linked. The rise of Islam in the Middle East and North Africa similarly shaped the identities of the people in those regions, creating a shared religious and cultural heritage. Finally, the intersection of religion with art, philosophy, and science was another profound legacy of monotheism. The Islamic Golden Age produced remarkable advancements in knowledge, as Muslim scholars built on earlier works while preserving and expanding ancient wisdom. Christian monasteries and universities became centers of learning during the Middle Ages, preserving classical texts and fostering intellectual development. In both the Islamic and Christian worlds, religious themes dominated art and architecture, from the grandeur of the Hagia Sophia to the intricate geometric designs of Islamic mosques. What do you think is the most significant impact of monotheism on today's world? Let us know in the comments, we'd love to hear your thoughts. As civilizations developed, religion became deeply intertwined with politics, power, and everyday life. 
From medieval Europe to the Islamic empires, religion was not only a source of spiritual guidance but also a political tool. In medieval Europe, Christianity was not merely a religion, it was the cornerstone of society, shaping every aspect of daily life, governance, and culture. The Catholic Church emerged as the single most powerful institution during this period, wielding influence over kings, emperors, and peasants alike. The Church's authority was rooted in its perceived spiritual dominance, it was the guardian of salvation, and with the belief that eternal life could only be achieved through the sacraments it administered, the Church held immense power over the populace. The Pope, as the head of the Catholic Church, became a political as well as a religious leader. His ability to crown emperors, excommunicate monarchs, and call for crusades gave him leverage that no secular ruler could easily ignore. For instance, the investiture controversy of the 11th century, a dispute between Pope Gregory VII and Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV over the right to appoint church officials, demonstrates how intertwined the church had become with political power. When Henry defied the Pope, he was excommunicated, a spiritual and political blow so severe that he eventually had to humiliate himself by begging the Pope's forgiveness at Canossa in 1077. This event underscored the Church's ability to challenge even the mightiest of kings. Monasticism played a vital role in medieval Christian society as well. Monasteries, often secluded communities of monks and nuns, became centers of learning, charity, and the preservation of knowledge. The monastic orders, such as the Benedictines, devoted themselves to prayer, study, and the copying of ancient texts, which helped preserve classical knowledge through the so-called Dark Ages. As Thomas Cahill famously argues in his book How the Irish Saved Civilization, the work of Irish monasteries in particular was crucial in safeguarding Western intellectual heritage during this turbulent period. During the High Middle Ages, the Crusades, a series of military campaigns sanctioned by the papacy, epitomized the Church's use of religion as a political and military tool. Beginning in 1096, the First Crusade was ostensibly aimed at reclaiming Jerusalem and the Holy Land from Muslim rule, but it also served to unite the fractious European nobility under a common cause. Though often brutal and marked by significant violence against Jews, Muslims, and even fellow Christians, the Crusades reinforced the notion of religious warfare and the concept of Christendom, a collective Christian identity that transcended national borders. The Church's political power was not without its darker sides. The Inquisition, established in the 12th century, sought to root out heresy and maintain doctrinal purity within Christendom. It wielded fear and torture as instruments of control, with notorious events like the Albigensian Crusade against the Cathars in southern France showing the lengths to which the Church would go to maintain its dominance. The cultural influence of Christianity was equally profound. One of the most enduring symbols of the period is the Gothic cathedral, with its towering spires, stained glass windows, and intricate stone carvings. These monumental structures, like Notre Dame in Paris and Chartres Cathedral, were more than places of worship, they were expressions of divine authority and human devotion. Gothic architecture, with its emphasis on height and light, symbolized humanity's reach toward God and reflected the centrality of faith in medieval life. While Christianity dominated Europe, Islam flourished across the Middle East, North Africa, and parts of Asia and Europe under the rule of powerful caliphates. The first major caliphate, the Umayyad, 661 to 750 CE, established Islam as a global force, expanding the religion's influence across three continents. Its successor, the Abbasid Caliphate, 750 to 1258 CE, marked a golden age of Islamic culture, science, and learning. The Abbasids, ruling from their capital in Baghdad, presided over a vibrant period of intellectual and cultural exchange, where religious scholars, scientists, and philosophers collaborated in a spirit of inquiry that was encouraged by Islamic teachings. Religious scholars, or ulama, held a central role in Islamic society, interpreting the Quran and Hadith, traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, to create a legal and moral framework known as Sharia. This body of law governed not only religious practices but also every aspect of life, from family law to commerce and criminal justice. The scholar al-Ghazali, 
1058-1111, one of the most prominent Islamic theologians, fused Sufism, Islamic mysticism, with Orthodox Islam, helping to reinvigorate faith and rationalize religious practice during a period of philosophical debate. Meanwhile, polymaths like Ibn Sina, known in the West as Avicenna, made remarkable contributions to fields such as medicine, astronomy, and philosophy. His canon of medicine remained a standard medical text in Europe and the Islamic world for centuries. Islamic rulers, particularly during the Abbasid period, were often characterized by their tolerance of other faiths within their domains. Christians and Jews, known as Dhimmi under Islamic law, were allowed to practice their religion as long as they paid a special tax, the jizya. This arrangement, while inherently unequal, did enable relatively peaceful coexistence between Muslims, Christians, and Jews for much of the medieval period, especially in places like Al-Andalus, Islamic Spain, where the three faiths interacted and influenced one another culturally and intellectually. In addition to the established monotheistic religions, the medieval era also saw the blending of indigenous and imported religious traditions, a process known as religious syncretism. This phenomenon occurred across different cultures, as new ideas and beliefs mingled with older, established traditions. In Africa, for example, the spread of Islam along trade routes, especially in West Africa, led to a fusion of Islamic practices with traditional African religious beliefs. This syncretism can be seen in the rise of powerful Islamic kingdoms like Mali and Songhai, where rulers converted to Islam but often incorporated traditional religious practices into their rule. Mansa Musa, the famed king of Mali, is an example of a ruler who used his Islamic faith to legitimize his authority while also embracing elements of his region's indigenous culture. His legendary pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324 underscored his devotion to Islam, but his reign remained deeply rooted in the African context. Similarly, in Asia, Buddhism's spread along the Silk Road facilitated the exchange of religious ideas. As Buddhism moved from India into China, it was influenced by Confucian and Taoist thought, creating new schools of Buddhist philosophy that adapted to local cultures. Mahayana Buddhism, which emphasized the Bodhisattva's compassion and the possibility of salvation for all beings, became popular in China and later Japan, showing how religious ideas could adapt and evolve in new cultural contexts. In Christian Europe, the divine right of kings was a central doctrine, suggesting that monarchs ruled by God's will and that questioning a king's authority was tantamount to questioning divine order. This principle helped sustain feudal systems, where loyalty to the king and the church was paramount. The concept of kingship was reinforced by religious rituals, such as coronations in which kings were anointed with holy oils, symbolizing their chosen status by God. Monasteries and religious institutions were not only spiritual centers but also hubs of education and economic activity. In an era where literacy was scarce, monasteries became the guardians of knowledge, preserving classical texts and producing new theological and philosophical works. Figures like Thomas Aquinas, whose Summa Theologica attempted to reconcile Christian theology with Aristotelian philosophy, emerged from this tradition of scholarly inquiry within the church. Monasteries also played a crucial role in agricultural production and the management of vast estates, making them integral to the medieval economy. In the Islamic world, the caliphate represented a fusion of religious and political authority, with caliphs serving as both spiritual leaders and temporal rulers. This dual role allowed for a centralized and coherent governance structure, where Islamic law shaped societal norms. The concept of the Ummah, or the global Muslim community, fostered a sense of unity among believers, transcending tribal and ethnic divisions. This unity was reinforced by religious practices like the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca, which brought Muslims from all corners of the Islamic world together in a shared act of devotion. Religious conflicts also played a significant role in shaping the medieval world. The Crusades, which spanned from the 11th to the 13th centuries, pitted Christian Europe against the Muslim world in a series of bloody wars over control of the Holy Land. While these conflicts were driven by religious fervor, they also had political and economic motivations. The Crusades had lasting consequences, 
not only for relations between Christians and Muslims but also for the development of European national identities and the consolidation of papal power. Pilgrimage, both in Christianity and Islam, was another significant aspect of religious life in the medieval era. The pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela in Spain, Jerusalem for Christians, and the Hajj to Mecca for Muslims were profound spiritual journeys that reinforced personal piety and connected pilgrims to the broader religious community. These journeys also facilitated cultural exchanges, as pilgrims brought back knowledge, goods, and ideas from different regions, further blending the cultural fabric of the medieval world. By the 16th century, cracks began to appear in the dominant religious structures, particularly in Europe. The Protestant Reformation, led by Martin Luther, would radically alter the Christian world and set off centuries of conflict. The 16th century marked a seismic shift in the religious landscape of Europe, heralded by the Protestant Reformation. At its heart was Martin Luther, a German monk whose theological disagreements with the Catholic Church catalyzed one of the most significant religious upheavals in history. Luther's 95 Theses, famously nailed to the door of the Wittenberg Castle Church in 1517, were a direct challenge to the Church's practice of selling indulgences, payments made to absolve sins. Luther's critique of these practices was not merely an act of defiance but a broader indictment of what he saw as corruption within the Church. Luther's ideas, propelled by the newly invented printing press, spread rapidly across Europe. The press, a revolutionary technology at the time, enabled the mass production of texts, allowing Luther's works to reach a wide audience and foster a public debate on religious reform. As Luther's influence grew, so did the movement he inspired, leading to the rise of various Protestant denominations. The Reformation resulted in the establishment of Lutheranism, Calvinism, and Anglicanism, each with its distinct doctrines and practices. The Reformation was more than just a theological dispute, it was a profound social and political revolution. In many regions, it contributed to the weakening of papal authority and the consolidation of secular power. Rulers and states adopted Protestantism to assert their independence from the Catholic Church and to gain control over church properties and revenues. This transformation also led to the creation of state churches, where religious practices were closely aligned with national identities and political power. In response to the Protestant challenge, the Catholic Church initiated its own period of reform known as the Counter-Reformation. This movement sought to address some of the criticisms raised by Protestants while reaffirming core Catholic doctrines. The Council of Trent, 1545-1563, was a central component of the Counter-Reformation, gathering church leaders to address issues of corruption, define Catholic doctrine, and reform church practices. The Council produced a series of decrees that clarified the Church's position on various theological issues, such as the role of tradition and scripture, the nature of the sacraments, and the need for clerical reform. The Jesuits, or the Society of Jesus, founded by Ignatius of Loyola in 1540, played a pivotal role in the Counter-Reformation. Jesuits were renowned for their rigorous education, missionary work, and commitment to defending the Catholic faith. They established schools and universities across Europe and beyond, which not only promoted Catholic teachings but also contributed to the intellectual and cultural life of the period. The Jesuits were instrumental in the re-establishment of Catholicism in parts of Europe where Protestantism had taken root, including Poland and parts of Germany. The Reformation set the stage for a series of devastating religious wars that would shape European history for the next century. The Thirty Years' War, 1618-1648, was one of the most destructive conflicts of this period. Originating in the Holy Roman Empire, it began as a struggle between Protestant and Catholic states but evolved into a broader conflict involving much of Europe. The war's impact was catastrophic, with widespread destruction, famine, and disease leading to a significant loss of life and economic disruption. In England, religious discord culminated in the English Civil War, 1642-1651, a conflict between the Royalists, who supported King Charles I, and the Parliamentarians, who sought greater parliamentary control and religious reforms. 
the war was not only a struggle for political power but also reflected deep-seated religious divisions between Anglicans and Puritans. The eventual victory of the parliamentarians led to the temporary overthrow of the monarchy and the establishment of a commonwealth under Oliver Cromwell. In France, the French Wars of Religion, 1562-1598, were marked by brutal sectarian violence between Catholics and Huguenots, French Protestants. The wars included infamous events such as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in 1572, where thousands of Huguenots were killed. The conflict finally concluded with the Edict of Nantes in 1598, which granted religious tolerance to Protestants and helped to restore a measure of peace and stability. As the 17th century progressed, the Enlightenment emerged as a powerful intellectual movement that challenged traditional religious and political authority. Enlightenment thinkers, such as Voltaire, John Locke, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, advocated for reason, individualism, and secularism. Their writings questioned the legitimacy of religious dogma and championed the separation of church and state. Voltaire's sharp critiques of the church and organized religion, combined with his defense of freedom of thought, made him a prominent advocate for secularism. Locke's theories on government and religious tolerance influenced the development of modern democratic thought, emphasizing the need for religious freedom and the protection of individual rights. The Enlightenment's promotion of secularism did not entirely erase religion from public life but encouraged a re-evaluation of its role in governance and society. It laid the groundwork for the development of secular political systems and legal frameworks that sought to balance religious freedom with the principles of equality and justice. The Reformation and its aftermath led to a profound fragmentation of European Christianity. The rise of national churches and competing denominations created a religious landscape characterized by diversity and division. This fragmentation had significant cultural and social consequences, influencing everything from art and literature to political governance and national identity. Religious justifications for colonization were also evident during this period. European powers, including Spain, Portugal, and later Britain and France, embarked on voyages of exploration and colonization with the explicit aim of spreading Christianity. This often involved the imposition of European religious and cultural norms on indigenous populations in the Americas, Africa, and Asia, leading to complex and sometimes tragic interactions between different cultures and faiths. The Enlightenment's push for secular political systems marked the beginning of a broader trend towards the separation of church and state. This shift was crucial in developing modern democracies where religious institutions no longer held direct political power. Instead, secular governance became the norm, with laws and policies increasingly based on principles of reason and universal human rights rather than religious authority. Religious tolerance emerged as an evolving concept, driven by the need to coexist in increasingly diverse societies. The gradual acceptance of different religious beliefs and practices reflected a growing recognition of the importance of coexistence in pluralistic societies. However, achieving this tolerance was often a slow and contentious process, as societies grappled with the challenges of integrating diverse religious traditions while maintaining social cohesion. The growth of religious pluralism presented both opportunities and challenges. On one hand, it enriched cultural landscapes and fostered a greater appreciation for diverse perspectives. On the other hand, it required societies to navigate the complexities of maintaining harmony and mutual respect amidst the multiplicity of beliefs. What do you think about the impact of the Reformation and Enlightenment on modern religious and political systems? How do you feel these historical shifts influence our world today? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're enjoying our exploration of the evolution of religion, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned as we continue this journey through history. Your support helps us keep creating content like this and fosters a community of curious minds. In the modern world, religion has faced both resurgence and decline. While many parts of the globe remain deeply religious, secularism has also taken root, particularly in the West. The 19th century was a period of profound transformation, marked by the rise of nationalism, the decline of religious monarchies, 
and the sweeping changes brought by the Industrial Revolution. These shifts had a significant impact on religious institutions and practices. As nations consolidated and modern states emerged, the divine right of kings and religiously sanctioned monarchies began to wane. Nationalism became a powerful force, emphasizing the sovereignty of the nation-state over religious authority. This period saw the gradual separation of church and state, particularly in Europe, where many monarchies lost their religious underpinnings. The Industrial Revolution brought about rapid technological advancements and economic changes that challenged traditional ways of life. Religious institutions had to adapt to these new realities. Some embraced the changes, using the new technologies to spread their messages more widely through newspapers and radio. Others struggled with the implications of urbanization, secular education, and scientific progress, as these developments often conflicted with traditional religious views. The 19th century also witnessed the rise of religious movements that sought to address the social issues arising from industrialization. For instance, the social gospel movement in the United States focused on applying Christian ethics to social problems, advocating for social justice and reform in response to the harsh conditions faced by the working class. The 20th century was a period of intense conflict and transformation, profoundly shaping the role of religion in global affairs. The devastation of World War I and World War II left many questioning the efficacy of religion in the face of such large-scale suffering and destruction. The horrors of war led to a disillusionment with traditional religious assurances of peace and moral order. In the aftermath, there was a significant rise in atheism and agnosticism, as many sought secular explanations for the causes of conflict and suffering. The 20th century also saw the rise of secular totalitarian regimes that actively suppressed religious practices. In the Soviet Union, under leaders like Lenin and Stalin, religion was viewed as an opiate of the masses and was systematically repressed. Similarly, Nazi Germany under Hitler promoted a form of state ideology that subordinated religious belief to the goals of the state. Despite this, religious groups continued to play critical roles in various resistance movements and humanitarian efforts. For example, religious organizations were instrumental in providing aid and comfort to those suffering under totalitarian regimes. The post-World War II era brought significant changes in the religious landscape, marked by a resurgence of religious movements and the spread of new religious ideas. Following the wars, many countries adopted policies promoting religious freedom and pluralism. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the United Nations in 1948, affirmed the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This framework encouraged a global recognition of diverse religious practices and beliefs. In the latter half of the 20th century, Pentecostalism and evangelical movements experienced significant growth, these movements emphasized personal religious experiences, charismatic worship, and a proactive approach to evangelism. They gained prominence in various parts of the world, including the Americas, Africa, and Asia, influencing global Christianity with their vibrant worship practices and outreach efforts. The late 20th century saw a resurgence of Islam, notably exemplified by the Iranian Revolution of 1979. This revolution established an Islamic Republic under Ayatollah Khomeini, which significantly impacted the political and social landscape of the Middle East. The rise of political Islam and its influence on global affairs highlighted the ongoing significance of religion in shaping national and international policies. The period also saw the emergence of new religious movements, such as Scientology and various forms of New Age spirituality. These movements often sought to address modern existential questions and provide spiritual alternatives to traditional religious structures. Their global spread was facilitated by increasing communication technologies and migration. The tension between religious traditions and modern science has been a defining feature of the modern era. Debates over issues such as evolution versus creationism continue to polarize communities. 
the rise of scientific understanding and technological advancements has often challenged religious interpretations of the natural world, leading to ongoing discussions about the compatibility of faith and reason. Religion has also played a crucial role in civil rights movements. In the United States, figures like Martin Luther King Jr. drew on Christian teachings to advocate for racial equality and justice. His leadership in the American civil rights movement demonstrated how religious convictions can drive social change. Similarly, the Catholic Church's involvement in anti-colonial movements highlighted the role of religion in advocating for social and political transformation. Globalization and the spread of media have facilitated the global dissemination of religious ideas and practices. Religious communities and leaders can now reach audiences worldwide through television, the internet, and social media. This has led to increased awareness of diverse religious traditions and has contributed to both the spread of religious ideas and the blending of different cultural practices. Religion remains a potent force in both conflict and peacemaking. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, for instance, is deeply intertwined with religious identities and claims. In South Asia, religious violence has impacted millions, illustrating how religious differences can fuel tensions. Conversely, religious leaders and organizations have played crucial roles in peace-building efforts, seeking to bridge divides and promote reconciliation. Secularism has become the dominant force in Western Europe, where many countries have adopted secular political systems and legal frameworks. This contrasts sharply with religious conservatism in other regions, such as the Middle East and the American Bible Belt. The coexistence of secularism and religious conservatism highlights the diverse ways societies navigate the intersection of religion and modernity. As we reflect on the impact of religion in the modern era, how do you see the role of religion in shaping contemporary issues? Do you think secularism and religious traditions can coexist harmoniously in today's globalized world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're enjoying this exploration of religion's evolution, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for more insightful content. Your support helps us continue creating content that explores the complexities of our world. Today, religion continues to shape our world in ways both profound and subtle. As we move deeper into the 21st century, the role of religion in society will continue to evolve, reflecting the complexities of our increasingly interconnected world. In the 21st century, secularism has become a defining feature of many Western societies. As traditional religious institutions face declining membership and influence, secular values have increasingly shaped public policies and societal norms. This shift is evident in the growing acceptance of secular ethics and the separation of religion from state affairs. The decline of traditional religious institutions in the West is attributed to several factors, including changing societal values, increased secular education, and the rise of scientific understanding. Many individuals now identify as non-denominational or spiritual but not religious, reflecting a shift away from formal religious affiliations towards more personal, individualized spiritual practices. Secularism has impacted various aspects of life, including legislation and cultural practices. For example, debates over issues such as abortion, marriage equality, and freedom of speech have increasingly been framed in secular terms. This shift has led to a re-evaluation of religious influence in public life, often resulting in more inclusive and diverse societal norms. At the same time, the 21st century has witnessed a resurgence of religious fundamentalism. This movement, characterized by a strict adherence to perceived core principles of a religion, has had significant social and political implications. Religious fundamentalism often emerges as a response to rapid social changes and perceived threats to traditional values. It can manifest in various forms, from political movements seeking to impose religious laws to violent extremism. The rise of fundamentalist groups has influenced global politics, contributing to conflicts and shaping international relations. 
In the Middle East, for instance, the rise of groups like the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria has highlighted the intersection of religion and geopolitics. Similarly, the influence of religious fundamentalism can be seen in various political movements around the world, reflecting deep-seated tensions between traditional values and modernity. In contrast to fundamentalism, there has been a growing emphasis on interfaith dialogue and efforts to promote religious tolerance and peace. This movement seeks to bridge divides between different religious traditions and foster mutual understanding. Interfaith dialogue initiatives have gained momentum through various organizations and events aimed at promoting cooperation and reducing conflict. These efforts often focus on shared values and common goals encouraging collaboration on social issues such as poverty alleviation and peacebuilding. Religious tolerance has become a critical component of international diplomacy and domestic policy. Many countries are working to create inclusive societies where diverse religious beliefs can coexist peacefully. Educational programs and public initiatives aim to combat prejudice and foster respect among different faith communities. As we look to the future, the landscape of religion will continue to evolve. New spiritual movements are likely to emerge, reflecting the changing needs and experiences of individuals in a rapidly transforming world. The search for meaning in an increasingly complex world may give rise to new spiritual movements and practices. These emerging movements often blend elements from various traditions, reflecting the growing desire for personalized and holistic approaches to spirituality. Artificial intelligence is poised to impact various aspects of religion, from how religious services are conducted to the ethical implications of AI-driven decision-making. The integration of AI into religious practices and discourse will likely provoke profound questions about consciousness, agency, and the nature of belief. In a world characterized by rapid change and uncertainty, the quest for meaning remains a fundamental human pursuit. Religion, in its many forms, continues to offer answers to existential questions and provide a sense of purpose and connection. As we conclude this journey through the history of religion, we see that it has always been more than a set of beliefs, it has been a force shaping human culture, politics, and society. The story of religion is, in many ways, the story of humanity itself. What do you think the future holds for religion in a rapidly changing world? How do you see the role of new spiritual movements and technological advancements shaping our understanding of faith? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this exploration of religion's impact through the ages, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for more in-depth content. Your support helps us continue to explore the profound questions and stories that shape our world.